Uh, my name is Jeremy Hammond. I'm with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife out of Columbia, Missouri. Uh, the boat we have to my right is our boat, while well, one to the left is actually Tennessee Tech, but they're generally they're built the same. Um, they actually used our design to, to build it. Uh, the dozer trawl that we'll be talking about, it's essentially just an electrofishing boat that we added a big frame to. That's all it is. Um, as you can see, if you move over kind of closer and you can look at this one, these are essentially just electrofishing booms. And what we've done is just added see a bar across the front and put down anodes and added this frame design to go along with it. This is a three foot by seven foot frame. Nets go back, the body of the net on this one is three quarter mesh and it goes back to a six millimeter cod. These can all be adjusted to whatever you guys are fishing for. So it's really an objective driven kind of of, of system. So if you want to catch smaller fish, adjust the mesh. If you want to catch larger fish, adjust it to that way. These are not really removal methods. These are more for your monitoring and management kind of objectives. Um, we've added these kind of, everything kind of breaks down so you can easily just push it back into the boat, take the frame off, turn it into an electro fishing boat if you need it to be that instead. So they're kind of go both ways. These frames are built, these frames are attached to a winch system, so they're allowed to go up and down in the water column. These right here fish about three feet into the water column. You can adjust those all the way up. The motors we have on ours is a jet motor, so we're allowed to go in a little bit shallower water. Props are in the, on the Tennessee Tech one. We have a prop boat as well that we use for it. Same idea, you know, it's just what you prefer. We are also, uh, in the process of building one with a, a gator tail on it to see if we can get into those really shallow backwater systems that are notoriously difficult to sample. Uh, these boxes that go along with these systems, we have had attached to an ETS box and an MLES box. They are not the preferred, it's just that we, what we have in our system. These boxes are interchangeable, they work either way. Um, we've had minimal to no problems with them. They've been able to get our AMP goals that we need. We have built AMP goal tables for all these to try to standardize it to the AFS standard methods for sampling freshwater fish. So these are kind of, these are standardized methodologies that we use with our electro fishing to go with these. Um, the, let's see what else kind of, anybody have any questions too while we're going along? Go ahead, Blaine. Jeremy, uh, how fast are you pushing these? These go, the, what we run in our standard runs is about three miles per hour, so 4.8 kilometers per hour. Um, we do that one, seems from our experiences, what we're seeing is that's an appropriate one to, to be able to actually net these bigger fish that tend to be elusive to, to a lot of your electrical fields as well as small fish. And it's a safety precaution as well. We don't, we don't want to run too much faster than, than that at this point. We have slowed down sometimes, but for our standard kind of population assessments, we run about three, three miles per hour. And that seems, seems to be doing the job at, for, for what we need it to do. Um, we run in low flows. Um, we have probably, uh, you know, we tend to do backwaters. We have run in side channels. We ran, run them in main channel borders. Um, so you, you can be a little bit versatile on these river systems, however, you know, any sort of flood stage or, you know, high water situation, you want to be really cautious with running these boats um, just for the safety factor of, you know, getting a snag or something like that. These nets, um, this one does not have it. This is a newer net design that we have. But um, if you bring out that net that we have as a backup, it has a shafe that goes on the bottom of it. That just prevents wear and tear on our nets, extends the life on them. It's been a lifesaver when it comes to, to using these nets multiple years um, throughout, throughout the projects that we use them for. Is that Dyneema? This one is Dyneema. Um, that one is high density polyethylene, so um, they are go back and forth on, on what our net, net uh, maker will present to us. So, so um, Dyneema probably is a, you know, decreases your, your back push because it's going to be thinner diameter for the strength, so you're going to be able to go a little, little easier, move along a little easier. Yep, yep, that was a design for the, the new one. Um, yeah, they tend to say 
the Dyneema just flows a little bit better in the water, less resistance. So, uh, yeah, bringing up the net, it's very simple. Um, once you just get it up, we do have a pedal design and a shutdown design, just like in any electro fishing boat safety on this. Um, easy removal, just a cod removal, drop it out the bottom into our totes in the back. Work them up, release any fish that you don't, don't need to keep, and you're set to go. So, anything else that you guys might have? Safety, how does the breakaway work? Oh yeah, good call. This is a, a breakaway low strength line. So, when you're going in the water itself, it sits perpendicular. If you have any snags, this will break and give, allowing you to actually kick it into neutral, safely get out of the situation, lift it up, replace the brake line and you're back to work. So there are safety precautions built into these, these net designs. And there, there is possibility that there, we've heard of, you know, people that might want to modify to a larger frame system. These are just the standard sizes that we run. But there has been talk that maybe in larger systems, different deeper systems, running a bigger frame might be a better suiting, suited for that. So. And just as a comment, uh, you know, these, these bow crawls, and the dozer crawls, that sort of thing, and from a safety standpoint, anytime you can have the thing, your front end snagged on at the bottom, you're in a lot better condition than you are with your back end snagged off the bottom. I mean, because if you're in any kind of current, because you will be in deep trouble with your, with when you're, you know, if you're stuck on the bottom with your stern, but in the front, you, you got quite a bit more flexibility. Yeah, ab absolutely. It's, it's helped tremendously. We usually park... We have a driver, I forgot to mention also, we run these as two-man system or three-man system. They, they can run as easily, um, just depends on the experience of your group. Three-man if you're kind of new to it, but two, two, people, two experienced uh, crew members can easily handle, handle the boat itself. So, and usually they, we have the front side and they're, the front guy is usually in charge of just seeing if there's snags. Um, they have the hydraulic lift or the winch lift on the front so they can lift up the frame if they do see something ahead to get it out of the way, things like that. So 